Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. You know it's the Joe Jaguar. We're at daytime here. Today I have for you guys a Twilight uh, AZ. I guess this would be like equivalent to an AZ5. Um, and I wanted to check this guy out. Let me raise it for you guys. Obviously it's daytime, so let's maybe try taking a look at the sun. Um, I got a four inch F5 refractor. That's much better. It is pretty good, like as far as it feels good quality, it's sturdy-ish. Um, it's a good height. I did find a problem with it. Was, let's say looking at the sun, because the sun is so high overhead, I had to put a really uh, long bar. So instead of like a five inch bar, I had to put a six inch bar. And I'm up pretty much as high as I can go for it to kind of swing underneath. But of course, if I'm now looking, if I am now looking sideways or horizontal, it's way too front heavy type of thing. But maybe for this direction won't be too bad. Um, now normally, I have used a lot of the AZ3 mounts and they're pretty good for like 80 millimeter uh, refractors. Skywatcher Celestron uh, still sells them with uh, 80 millimeter refractors, the 102 F5 refractors and the 120 F5 refractors. Now, I would say the 80 millimeters good I have problems uh, with the 102 on the AZ3. It's just too heavy for it. Um, and the 120, I don't even think they should sell it like that. But this definitely feels like uh, the 102 should be on this. Maybe even the 120 uh, could be on this guy. Uh, again, it's not perfect. Uh, even though it's a lot better than the AZ3, it is a lot more heavier. So if you guys are gonna be doing camping or you wanna travel with it, uh, backpacking, this would just be too heavy. The AZ3 might be uh, a better bet for you, but then, uh, like I said, the 102 F5 is maxed on it. Uh, and there are some angles I really gotta get that nut really tight. But it can work if you want something light. Uh, this is a better setup but it's definitely heavier. And like I said, you either need a long bar. Uh, if I put the telescope down on its rings, it's gonna hit. If I put that bar further lower, it's, it's gonna hit as well. So again, this has some problems, but I guess as long as you're not looking, um, I guess about uh, no higher than 80 degrees, uh, it can work uh, and probably better for most applications. But you know, I wanted to take a look at the sun, just give a quick uh, intro on this guy. I like how it has the locking nuts on both sides, plus the slow motion controls. This is the one thing I don't like about a lot of um, Altazimuth mounts. They don't come with like manual slow, slow motion controls. I don't know why they do that. Um, really every telescope should have, or every mount should have slow motion controls. Uh, I think, personally. It's not a big deal, but maybe it adds a lot more cost to it. I think more people would buy it though. Anyway, overall the construction is pretty good. The steel legs here, they look like it's about an inch and a half steel legs here, and the bottom part looks like an uh, inch. This is about as high as it goes, so if I go to the top of this, uh, where the arm is, that's, I would say, uh, close to five feet uh, type of thing. I'm about five seven, uh, something like that. Uh, so construction overall, I think is pretty good. Comes with two locking nuts, which is good. Slow motion controls are nice. I think it, it's pretty good. Now these are not cheap though as well. Uh, this one here in, in Canada, uh, it's probably uh, about uh, 450 bucks before tax. So with tax is about 500 bucks. So it's not cheap per se. But I'll show you a quick rundown. So that's tripod full and here's the arm I think construction's pretty good quality sturdiness is pretty good um, like I said it's pretty good 
But if this was anything more than a four inch F5 refractor, and you're looking more than 80 degrees up, it just doesn't work, especially if this was a long version refractor or that type of thing. Uh, uh, this thing would be pretty hard stressed. Now, maybe for a regular um, nighttime viewing, you're not looking directly up. Although there's sometimes in the night, you're gonna be looking straight up as well, right? Right now, if I put it towards the horizon, it's gonna drop. Uh, but at that angle, it seems to be holding. Anyway, I give this a four to five um, star this mount it's pretty decent for what you want if you want backpacking it's too heavy uh, but if you want something better than an az3 you know skywatcher and a few others make an az4 az5 this is probably about the same class as the az5 and give it a shot it's okay it's not really portable um, i'm assuming most people would take it in a car anyway but uh, there you go guys there's my review of the Twilight Explorer Scientific. And while I'm here in the outdoor, and we just did a test on this guy, let's take a look at the sun. And I got it. If you guys do not have a solar filter on your telescope, I'm just talking about a white light solar filter, you gotta get it. It's one of the most cheapest things to do. I actually have solar glasses that uh, if you guys like, you can get off me, just let me know. Uh, the $5 each Canadian, and then it includes shipping worldwide, airmail. Um, I also do have solar film, Thousand Oaks. So if you guys don't have a solar filter, just buy the white light. There is so many black spots or sunspots on the sun. Wow. Now, I just sold my uh, Coronado Solar Max 3, 90 millimeter. Now, that guy Canadian with tax is about 7,400. Uh, I just wasn't using it. Uh, today, I'm kind of homesick. Um, I thought I had a hernia uh, maybe uh, yesterday. Uh, I got checked in, and they think I just pulled a, a muscle spasm, which I've never heard of a muscle spasm uh, you know but uh, so that's why I thought it was a hernia but anyway so I took today off and I'm here and we're doing this test so I figure okay why don't I just show you this guy and we can test it but yeah you guys should be um, you should have a, a solar filter even if it's just this guy but anyway I wasn't doing enough solar viewing because in the weekdays by the time I get home it's late the only time I really have to look at the Sun is on the weekends and then when Angelus comes over on the weekends, I am just busy with her, we're doing stuff, we're going bike riding. So weekends, I 99% I don't do it either. So literally I had that scope that's like $7,400 and I probably used it like six times in total, two and a half years. Um, so I just figured give it to somebody else that uh, will enjoy it. Um, Maybe later on, if I can get a 50 millimeter, something small that I, you know, if, I, if it's not too expensive and uh, I'm not gonna use it that often, maybe that's the best way to go. Anyway, guys, and remember, like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. If you know anybody that likes astro stuff, shoot them a link to me. If you guys are on the forums and you see a question that somebody asks of a video I already have, send them my link. Why not you? Why not me? Cheers. Hey guys, just a reminder that we now have three channels. One is just the Astro channel, Joe Jaguar, City Astronomer. Then we have our couples uh, channel, uh, Joe and Angelus. And then we have Angelus uh, made one, a special needs journey with Frankie. The reason why, instead of having all three different types of uh, videos on one channel we just want to make them individual so the astro channel will only be astro stuff in the description below uh you can get to the other two please subscribe to the other two